The debate over an open internet has raged for more than a decade. On December 14th, the FCC will almost certainly vote to repeal open internet protections, known as net neutrality. But net neutrality is more than Netflix, business decisions, and higher fees for worse service. It's a battle over which voices get heard and the people who might lose out in the process. This is not a fight between Comcast and Netflix. This is not a fight between the geeks and the nerds. This is a fight between ordinary people and our right and ability to access a modern communication system in the 21st century and those who would like to discriminate and use that system for profit instead of for democracy. That's Malkia Cyril, the director of the Center for Media Justice. She's been writing about net neutrality for almost a decade. Under net neutrality, internet service providers must give everyone equal access to everything on the internet. Without it, companies like Verizon, Comcast, and AT&T could block content, charge users more to connect to certain sites, or even create paid fast lanes that prioritize certain sites and services over others. Full disclosure, Comcast is NBC News' parent company. Those who could not afford to pay money to have their voices heard simply would be erased. But online, the voice of Tarania Burke, a black woman who started the Me Too movement, can be heard. That couldn't happen if it had to pass through the gatekeepers that control cable television, that control our newspapers. That can only happen on an open internet. In the decades since the term net neutrality was introduced, the internet has evolved exponentially, transforming the boundaries between what happens online and offline. We can see it in the political movements that began online. They need communications power to be heard. Voices of Black Lives Matter and the hashtag Me Too, it's not about a hashtag. The fact is that it sparked an offline movement. Massive shifts, massive changes take place. Comcast, Verizon, and AT&T have all said that they are committed to an open internet. But Cyril says that fears about what could happen without net neutrality aren't just hypothetical. She says these companies' past actions show what might happen if these rules are repealed. In 2007, Verizon denied a request from an abortion rights group to set up mobile alerts for supporters. The company later reversed that decision after public uproar. In 2008, Comcast slowed traffic from the file-sharing site BitTorrent. And in 2012, AT&T blocked Apple's FaceTime app, unless customers paid extra for a mobile shared data plan. We do everything online these days. It is a place where we can long for each other and have that longing met in a real way, where we can reach out and have real conversations. And that's what they're interfering with here. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.